This is Carl Palachuk, and you're listening to the SMB Community Podcast, produced by and for the Small Biz Thoughts community. We are dedicated to making every IT professional a successful IT professional. Welcome to another SMB Community Podcast. I'm joined today by my good friend, Nigel Moore, all the way from Australia. G'day. G'day. I have to have to lead with a g'day. So it's afternoon for me, but early morning for Nigel. So I appreciate you doing this. I I sincerely do. And it's always good to talk to you. And I guess this is prompted by your new book, which I'm holding up and nobody can see, but uh, (laughs) it's a great, like it's a little over 150 pages and uh, it's called Package Price Profit. So you got the nice little alliteration going on there. Yes. Uh, how long did it take you to write this? Don't it's, tell me 10 years. It's funny. Uh, the first, so I was aiming for it to be only fifteen to 18,000 words. And it ended up being, I think, 24,000 or something like that. And the first 15,000 words took me only a couple of hours to write. It all just blurted out. I just sat right. in front of a computer and went, and all these words just came out. And I went, oh, this process is nice and easy. <laughs> then the next, the next 3,000 words took me, maybe that first lot took me six hours. And then the next lot, the next 3,000 took me six hours. And then the next 1,000 took me six hours. And I had this kind of, and it went up to, then the editing process took another 20 hours. And so I think um, I don't know, all up over the time span, it was about a th- two and a half month period. Right. Uh, and I, the whole goal was to make it very short so people could get through it. And I could write it at the same time rather than if it was too long. I wouldn't have written a thing. No, that's very, very good. So uh, for folks who don't know, Nigel has been a managed service provider, has been a break fixer, like way back in the yes. day. Uh, has been a managed service provider, uh, sold that business, runs the tech tribe. And uh, probably that's probably the easiest place to get a hold of you. Yes, correct. Yeah. Techtribe.com is the easiest place to find me. All right. Very good. So, so of all the things you could write about. So first of all, let me just say, (laughs) thank you for not writing a generic book on managed services. Like the the message is not, Hey, you should do managed services. (laughs) So thank you for that. (laughs) Uh, but why the specific choice of packaging and pricing? I think I have probably been asked the question as you probably have as well about 500 times of how the heck do I price my plans and how the heck do I package my plans? And, uh, and a lot of the answers that we end up coming out with are pretty similar. And I thought, well, I'm going to answer this for once and for all and throw it in a book. <laughs> and then, then instead of spending time going, well, you can do this and you can do that and you can do all these things. I'm just going to say, read the damn book and then come back with questions. Except, <laughs> except that you, you, now you're in the same exact position as I am, which is that you don't answer the question in the book. Right. What you do is you say, well, uh, some people do this and some people do this. Yes, correct. Like that. Exactly and right. It's, it's like it does give you all the information you need, but there is a different answer for everybody. That's true. Yeah. So, so there, you know, there isn't an, oh, here is the answer. And I'll tell you the good thing about that. If you write and say, here is the answer, people will read your book and they will do something different. Mm. And they'll still give you all the credit. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the, the, you know, you'll be like, well, wait a minute. I, I gave you the formula. I gave you the truth. And, uh, yep. and they're like, yeah, but yeah, I don't do blocks of time. I don't do this. That's it. They have to learn the lesson the hard way themselves sometimes. So I love the way you start out with, which is basically, so if you haven't read it, it's, it's, a, it's a good book, nice sense of humor, uh, 25 pages of disclaimers. So why did you do it that way? <laughs> you know, there's, as, as you just said, then there is no perfect way to do pricing in our industry. There's no perfect way to do packaging in our industry. And the way that I articulate in here has some certain nuances to it and some certain ways to it that I want people to know that you cannot just pick up anyone else's plans and packages and forklift them into your business successfully. Every single MSB business is different. They have different cost structures, different industries they serve, different owner mentalities and, and whatnot. And you need to craft your, your offering to suit the vast majority of them. And so I've made the book in a way that, that outlines lots of different methods and ways and approaches and the pros and cons of different ones. But uh, whilst allowing and giving you some of the, the, the mistakes to avoid and the, the, the many lessons that people like you and me have learned over the years of trying different methods that didn't work out too well, Right. And, uh, and articulate it 
t- articulated it out in a way that uh, that people can make a fairly objective uh, decision in there of how they can go and do things. However, I have put a lot of best practices in there right. that are that are fairly current in our industry at the moment, based on just the way the industry is going. Well, I agree completely. And you did a lot of research on the the psychology of pricing. Mm. I've always been a huge fan of the good, better, best. In fact, yes. that, that very terminology. I can't remember, maybe Sears or somebody first started this, you know, where you can get good, better, best. And it's so delightful because, okay, well, good sounds good until you've got better. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and then, well, okay, well, better sounds good until mm. you have best. And it, yeah. like, nobody's ever going to pick the good. Like yeah, good really exactly. means crap. Right? Yeah, <laughs> so. Exactly. Good's just there to frame your best. Oh, you're better. Yeah. Sorry, and to pre-frame it, and uh, and that that good, better, best mentality works very, very. Or psychology, buying psychology works very, very, very well in our space for most MSPs. And you'll see in the book, there's a few like there's a certain segment of the MSP market where it doesn't work well for. And so I list out in there where where you may end up moving away from good, better, best offering to just having a single offering, which is perfectly okay if right. that's in the type of MSP that you are. But so one of the things that's always interesting to me is, you know, you see it on the forums. I see it on the forums. People like, Hey, has anybody got a, you know, a contract or or a pricing (laughs) model or a price sheet that I can download? And people are very generous and they said, sure, you know, here's mine. Um, And then you download it and then it doesn't really solve any problems. Like the price sheet itself is not useful. It's not meaningful. You could go out right now. There's probably, literally a thousand MSPs who've got their pricing listed on their website. Yeah. But when you, as soon as you look at it, you're like, Oh, except yeah, I don't do that in my business. And that, it doesn't fit with my clients and I can't frame it that way in, inside the manufacturing or the accounting industry. Right. <laughs> and so all that good free stuff you get out there doesn't have the context of saying, watch out for this, make sure you do that. If you got these kinds of clients do this Correct. You know, that, yeah. All that context is where all the good, you know, the juicy goodness is. Correct. And that's, that's most of us are always looking for the, the fastest shortcut and a quick fix on everything. And unfortunately in pricing and packaging, there is none. However, the whole goal of the book is that we do hopefully about 80% of the work for you, but you have to put in that final 20% to tweak it to your business and your nuances and, and whatnot. And so there's, there's templates that you can download along with a book and, and whatnot, but they're not things that you can forklift directly into your business. You do have to go and put in that extra bit of time, that 20%. There is no shortcut around that anywhere. If anyone ever finds one in the world that works for every single MSP, <laughs> please let me know because I'm sure we can make millions of dollars together selling it to, to everyone. But unfortunately, we haven't found it as yet. And so there is that 20% in there. The whole goal is that we save you the vast majority of time, but that 20% you have to put in the work. Well, and that gets us back to your disclaimers, which is you have to work your butt off. Yeah. Right. I mean, you, 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 you call it out like, yeah, you know, if you want the golden magic thing to come down from the clouds, you, this is not the book for you. Right. <laughs> correct. Only, yeah. uh, what's the price of the book? $2,500. $2,500. Correct. Yeah. Is that Australian or US? <laughs> US. Your, your dollar's too strong for it to be Australian at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to be like, uh, yeah. So, uh, 35. Yeah, probably about 3,500 Australian dollars. Bargain. <laughs> and, and as I say in the little disclaimer underneath the price, you have to read chapter nine for why that price is listed on the back. Right, exactly. So that, that's the value pricing of the book. Correct, um, yeah. Another thing that uh, like you and I, I think we agree on almost everything, but where we really agree is on the, the whole uh, idea of the, the buffet, Right. Okay. You can have an all you can eat buffet, except yes. first, please read the seven pages of rules. Right? <laughs> yeah, correct. You can't, you can't then say, Oh, and I want you to go cook me this special meal. That's going to take two and a yeah. half hours. And we're just going to throw that in for free. Correct. Yeah. So, so talk about all you can eat and kind of what, how you frame that. Yeah. So we, we, uh, a hundred percent. We used to use that, um, the, the buffet analogy over here when we were pitching and positioning managed service plans to clients in that, that we build these plans to include the vast majority of what most, uh, small businesses need to maintain and monitor and look after and manage and, and train and whatever on their, their network. But there is stuff that's not included in that scope. And so we give you an inclusion list to show you what we do include in our plans and offerings and anything that is not included on that inclusion list, which is essentially is our buffet tables of food dishes. 
that stuff is by default excluded and it's perfectly okay to have it. It's just out of scope and billable. And, uh, and that's how we position everything. We had this, this great inclusion list, which we, we drafted that showed all the types of things that we would cover, all the different things that were, were unlimited. You could do as many of them as you want. You could eat as much as you want of these things. And, and we crafted it so that it covered the vast majority of things. So there was not a lot of out of scope work, but we, we had very black and white lines. There was no gray lines of what was in and what wasn't in because what was, if it wasn't in there, it's not included by default. There was no, no extra kind of gray line around that area. Is, I think a lot of technicians think that they're going to get arguments from their clients about all this. Yes. We never argued with our clients about what was included yeah. or, you know, what we had is after a while clients would, would say, so is this included? Like yes. if we, if we, if we just add three more people, is that included? Yeah. And, and, and whatever answer you give, as long as it's consistent Correct. with how you sold it, then they're like, Oh, okay. And you know, I, I, I think sometimes nerds, have this sense of like, oh, I need to go through every possible conversation that a client could have with me and then have both sides of the conversation and then build my package around that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And that's the thing. Do Even myself back in the day, I, I used to be scared of that conversation that, hey, I'm going to potentially have to charge extra here. And, uh, and until I got comfortable with that conversation, I was losing money left over foot on agreements because we we're just including things by default. Then I realized that I'm giving this stuff away for free for no reason whatsoever. The only problem was that I was just scared of having that conversation with clients about in scope and out of scope. Once I started getting comfortable having that conversation with clients and using the buffet analogy as the example to be able to make it an easy conversation, that whole thing flipped and it took a little bit of, it wasn't an overnight change. It took a little bit of education with the clients and me, me pushing back a little bit and, and explaining how things work. And then they exactly the same in your situation. They got to the point where they would then say, Hey, is this, this in scope or Hey, we've got something that's out of scope here. Could you quote us up a, a quote on, on what that's going to be? When, when they were asking me that, I knew that we had the expectations set right then. Yeah. Now, we never really had any arguments with anybody. I have had clients who said, and this goes back to the good, better, best. Uh, I remember one time I had a guy, John, who one of my favorite clients, and when we were moving from per device to per user pricing, because it made sense inside his business, uh, he looked at the options and he was an attorney, right? So, so there's a <laughs> silver, gold, platinum and uh, I said, you know, so you get to pick one of these. And he said, you know me. And like, unless you tell me to do otherwise, I'm a platinum kind of guy. Yeah. So I'm, yeah. I'm going to, I'm just going to sign that. And there are people on the good, better, best who are platinum people. Like no oh, matter yeah. what's in your plat, it, it can include an annual golf outing and they're going to sign <laughs> it, right? Exactly right. Because <laughs> their self image is, you know, I drive this car and I sign yep. platinum agreements. And so- yeah. Uh, that's that's legitimate um absolutely and, and on the you know on the whole thing of what's included and what's excluded they're buying you right correct like none of these clients are strangers they're buying what you personally are selling and you look them in the eye and you ask them for their money it's not like big business where one person signs a contract for a, a, a you know a business with a thousand employees and then you show up to deliver it at least that's not my experience in small business. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. We had the exact same platinum clients in there and it's funny. They just, you, you show the plans or whatnot, or you walk through the plans a little bit and they just look at you with one this kind of glint in their eye saying, well, obviously I'm getting the top one. Right. <laughs> like, there's, no, there's no question about it. Right. And then, you know, I was always a little strategic with my plans, like gold only exists so people can convince themselves to buy. <laughs> exactly right. right. So, uh, how, how important do you think it is to have three distinct value propositions versus using the price list to sell the higher end? Yeah, I am a, um, it's different in every situation based on obviously people's uh, sales skills as well. So the more confident you are in the sales journey and handling a sales sales process and uh, handling objections and whatnot, the the different it might be. However, my, I'm a big fan in the SMB world, which is the world most of us operate in on the, the good, better, best. They're having the three value props in there and, and being able to clearly articulate them. There's a really good book that, that one of my good friends, Jamie Warner, introduced to me called Monetizing Innovation, which dives pretty deep into that, that sales psychology of good, better, best and whatnot. And, uh, and it makes a lot of sense. They, you look at most 
industries out there at the moment that deal with, with us, the consumer, and, and they've got some sort of good, better, best offering. You look at McDonald's and they've got the value meals in small, medium, large, and you look right. at airlines and they've got cattle class and, and business <laughs> and first, and, and there's just so many areas where that choice allows us to, to not be sold to, it allows us to buy. And that's that big part of the pricing psychology is when there's choices, it allows us to buy. When there's no choice, it means that we're being sold to. And, and a lot of us don't like being sold to. We love the, the, the option of, of picking, buying something, going to the shops and saying, do I want this one, this one, or this one, and making right. the decision ourselves. So the airline industry is an interesting analysis because to me, anyway, this is my perception, I don't think anybody's happy in cattle class. No, no. <laughs> right? <laughs> but, but they place themselves there. And in fact, most people place themselves there. So they part of their, the, the only joy they get is they get to complain about it. <laughs> they complain about it. And in the meantime, they're walking past people who paid $50 more and have leg. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so as long as you know that when you choose, when you choose good, it's not really better. Right. Correct. So. Yeah, exactly. It should be, it should be called standard, boring, better, best. <laughs> but it just doesn't have the same ring to it. So, you know me, I, I have the, silver gold platinum but i also i also had what was called pyrite which is fool's gold yes right? so i've got this like if you don't see an advertised one here's what your pricing is going to be yeah and of course that's somewhat fictional in that i didn't deal i, didn't, I never did business with somebody who didn't sign a contract right right okay. so so i have my three tiers but then i have this like and then if you don't sign yeah uh, this is this horrible thing that's going to happen to you yeah correct yeah we we had the the it was our down sell un, um, unadvertised version, which we had there. And so we had the, the three offerings, which were our main things. And we, we always led with them. And uh, every now and then we would come across some sort of client in an environment or a scenario that wouldn't lend themselves to that for that, that, that particular time for some reason. And uh, so there was a potential option to down sell them into another offering, which for us was our prepaid credit packs. There was, it wasn't a complete break fix, but prepaid credit packs on our terms. And uh, by, by that, I mean that, uh, so we, a specific example is we had this, this client that was owned by a company over in Japan and they had directives from head office to never sign contracts. So never sign recurring contracts. However, they had a lot of money in their budget. And uh, so they, they were just around the corner from us and, and all the bells were lining up right. And uh, we went, yeah, we do want to work with them, but they're just not going to sign a contract. So we downsold them to this unadvertised prepaid credit pack plan. And so they used to buy blocks of hours from us and about a hundred at a time, which was 15 grand at a time. And uh, they would churn through them pretty quickly. Every couple of months they would churn through their hundred hour block. But the way we we position this was there is no SLA, no guaranteed response times, no proactivity, no anything. And so you guys need to know that your network is going to have some problems (laughs) because you're not not allowing us to work on it proactively. And when you do have problems, we don't guarantee you any response time. So it could be days before we get back to you because our, 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 contract clients, our fixed care clients all come first. However, we'll put in this little thing here that says, if you do have a critical emergency and you want us, you can pay us an extra couple of hundred dollars for that particular issue. And we'll work on that issue at a higher priority for them. And, uh, and that's what used to deplete their hundred hour blocks really quickly because uh, that, that extra emergency upgrade fee would, would be tagged onto those things. So we never advertised that plan because we didn't want people to have it. However, we saw certain situations where we, we right. still were happy looking after these guys, and but they, uh, they just wouldn't fit. They were happy, yeah. They, yeah. they weren't happy when their network went down continually because <laughs> we were not allowed to monitor things like disk space or anything like that. We just couldn't do it. Wow. But, um, well, hey, as long, as long as they're happy. So that brings up the question of, so when you think about your clients should have standardized packages to, pro- to choose from, and it's not possible to have 100% of your clients on exactly like pick one of these three because somebody's always going to have an extra server or they're going to need extra response time or they run a 24 hour shop or whatever. Uh, how many of your clients should be on one of the three standard packages? 90%, 80%? I would say your goal should always try to be to get, get to hundred percent. However, as you say, that's not possible. And so if you, most, most people I see are, are hover around that have been doing this for a while, hover around the 80%. They've always got those little nuanced ones like we had around the edges that, that don't fit in. But most, if you can get to 80, 90%, that's a fairly comfortable figure for most of us SMBs out there. Uh, the small, which I call nimble MSPs in the book, that's Ooh, nice. nimble MSPs. I like that. 
Because if I call people small MSPs, as I say in the book, you, you might get a little bit offended by it. Whereas I'm, I'm a firm believer that the nimble MSPs, the ones doing less than five odd mil a year, they're the ones, that, like you guys are the ones best positioned to be able to have the greatest impact in the world. Right. And so, so my moniker for the, you guys is nimble MSPs. I, I like that nimble. I'm going to start using that uh, unless it's trademarked. <laughs> it is trademarked. <laughs> <laughs> But I do have a good, better, best offering for you to license that trademark. Oh, okay, okay. I, I'll, get, I'll, I'll, I'll get the best licensing. Yeah, good. So, uh, so where do we get this book? Like, I bought. I think I bought it on Kindle already. Yes, so it's on Amazon and Kindle at the moment. Uh, Amazon.com is the best place to buy it because Amazon, I have found, has these bizarre. I think it's tax treaty issues between different countries where you oh, can yeah. list it on certain ones and you can't list it on others and you can't change the price here and there and it gets a little crazy. So the easiest place to find it is amazon.com. And, and are you, do you have a printer so that if somebody wants to buy it in Europe, they can do that on Amazon? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So we've had a pile of people buy it over in the UK. I think it gets shipped locally actually in the UK. I, even if you buy it from amazon.com, I believe. Yeah, uh, it just depends on where their printer is. Yeah, yeah. We've been dealing because we, we print our own, finding a printer in Germany because if Brexit goes through, yeah. then there's all these import taxes because currently we Ouch. print in, in the UK and just right. ship anywhere in Europe and not have to pay extra taxes. Right. Okay. <sighs> Interesting. It is a minefield trying to ship a book around internationally, which is why at the moment it's just Amazon is the, the best place to get it. Amazon.com. And, and we've said it ridiculously priced. It's a low price. It's not actually $2,500. <laughs> uh, <laughs> otherwise I think we'd only make two sales. Right. Uh, but that's still okay. It's far more margin than what I make out of the current royalties you make out of it. So what's the real price? The real price at the moment is at the time of recording this, we've set it at, at 10 cents royalties for me at five bucks ah, uh, right. with the whole goal of getting it out there into the marketplace. And, and obviously a certain number of people that read the book come and, and join one of our programs and do some deeper work with us. Um, in oh, there. So the Certainly it should be worth more than that. You know, the thing with books is that uh, especially a nonfiction book, a book is not something that you, a nonfiction book is not something you read for enjoyment, right? This so even though true. it's enjoyable, it's a tool that helps your business. You know, I've had people whine about the, you know, oh, you charge $40 for this service agreement book. And I'm like, and saved you how many hours? Yeah, exactly. You know. A hundred percent. That's why some of the things that come with this book are worth hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars to someone that's going to not have to, it's going to save the time to do it themselves. And that's, that's why the value is there right. in any of the stuff that you and I put out there. It's just, you've got to be, you got to make sure you look for this stuff. Well, and you do really look at it at many, many angles, you know, of like, Oh, well, so consider this, consider that, consider the other thing. And so I think if anybody's seriously looking at their pricing, they do need to do this. And instead of just going on a, like I say, go and asking their friends and their friends will say, Oh, everything should be two ninety seven. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. That, <laughs> that doesn't really. <laughs> so. Yeah. I think it's a, I think it works quite well in with your managed services in a month book. It's a really good pair to put the two together as especially people starting out in our space or, or that have not done a lot of work on their pricing and offerings and, and how to roll that out to their clients and whatnot. I think pair the two together and you've got a pretty, pretty good little MBA in managed services. Yeah. I think so. And uh, if people buy them together, eventually Amazon will start offering them in a bundle of something. Yeah, there, so, there you go. Exactly. <laughs> that should be our goal. <laughs> exactly. Yep. So this is very cool. So uh, it, we're, we, we've got a little bit of time left. So why don't we, if you don't mind, pivot a minute and you can sure. tell us a little bit uh, about your community. So the cool. tribe, uh, the doors are open now. People are flooding. In. We are. We are. We have just added another 120 MSPs in the last couple of weeks into there, which is awesome. We've got some awesome new people joining from around the world. Uh, we were closed for a while doing some renovations. We had some staff things going on with some getting a key guy getting, getting sick. And so we, we had the doors closed for a little bit. Now we are completely open again. Uh, we've done some renovations. We've got some new stuff in there and, uh, and loving it. We're essentially, if for those that don't know a little bit of a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? An advertisement in the middle of a podcast is that it's a, a community or a global community program for MSPs that I've created. That is the type of program that I wished I had access to back when I had started my MSP. Now I did have access to great books like managed services in a month, but I just did not have access to any communities where there, you can download templates of training and manuals and whatnot. And so we've, we've created it as the community for 
for MSPs, nimble MSPs doing, doing less than five mil to be able to get in and get a ton of tools and, and training and uh, access to community and coaching and mentoring and whatnot to be able to help avoid all the crap that we did wrong or that I did wrong and <laughs> our team of tribal elders did wrong, which was a lot of it. Trust me. Well, and, you know, back to the, the topic of uh, you can't just download these forms and think that that's going to solve your problem. You've yeah. got a context. You've got a way to, to say, Nigel, why, why does this form look this way? And how, how am yeah. I supposed to use this? And what's, you know, where, where should I use this best? And at, at what point in my business? And you can have that conversation about how things fit together. Correct. Because uh, there's nothing about this business that's instant or obvious. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. It is, as I tell a lot of people when we're in this space, is you have picked one of the most incredibly hard business models in the world to go and dive into. There are so many nuanced little things around the outside of it. And, uh, and so it's not a matter of just picking up a, a franchise model and, and forklifting it down and you're, you're done and dusted. You, you need to go and understand all of these little nuances and learn from people that have made a billion mistakes trying to understand those nuances and, and go out there and, and run with yours. So it's one of the things that's kind of not, there's not much time spent on this and that is how do you do break fix pricing? Cause I think we all just say, uh, you you only do enough of that to move to managed services. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, and it is a somewhat complex environment. On the other hand, the big picture is it's supposed to make everybody's life easier, right? Correct. We flat yeah. fee the pricing. Yeah. Uh, we prevent all the problems before things break. Um, but unfortunately, our entire business, our entire industry is built on shifting ground. It's like we're all in an earthquake zone all the time. So. <laughs> yeah. 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 It is tough. And, uh, and it's, it's one of those things that the more you create a gap between what you offer as a break fix versus what you offer in some sort of managed recurring model, the easier it is to sell your managed recurring model. And so you have to do, you have to artificially create gaps in your offering there and, and push this big wedge. So it's, the break fix is nowhere near as good as what you're offering as you're recurring because let's face it, recurring is, is absolutely the best model for the clients as well, because you're doing the proactivity. You're doing, you're doing so you've got budget to be able to teach them on how to use their technology and adopt the technology better and educate them on different things and, and keep up to date with their security and whatnot. So it is by far the better model, but if you don't have enough of a gap between your managed service offerings and some sort of lower level break fix offering, there's no incentive for them to go and, and make that shift across. So sometimes, as I said, you've got to like with our, um, with our no SLA on our managed service stuff, you have to artificially create that, that gap. And you have to even push your service delivery team to make sure that they are not offering any sort of service delivery to your, your break fix clients. If you do have both types of clients in your business, that's anywhere near the level that you are offering to your, your managed service clients. Right. I was just, I let me see. Oh, he's not there. Uh, I'm monitoring a, a, a different Zoom channel over here. So one of the guys in, in my other, in my community, we were talking about how his hardest thing of, of getting people to move over was that um, he was giving them so much value mm. before. Exactly. Right. And, yeah. and, you know, it's interesting because in some ways the people who get the most value all you got to do is say, look, we're going to give you first priority and we're going to flat fee this. Um, yeah. But the people who want to move from true break fix, their problem is they're not showing people, look, here's regular monthly maintenance. Here's what it looks like. And it costs all this money. Yeah. Uh, they want to do the, hey, we'll see you every three months and then move you to managed services. <laughs> the client has no reason to do that. Like, wait a minute, you're going to take me from spending nothing to spending something? It doesn't make any sense. So you got to kind of do that. I call it the managed services two-step. The first step is get them addicted (laughs) to maintenance, and then you can flat fee the maintenance. But if they're not addicted to maintenance, there's it's really hard to make that move. It is, and it's one of those things. One of the other big things that I I worked on with a couple of my high-level coaching guys is the the psychology themselves. I find a lot of uh, especially us techies, they, they don't believe 100% in the managed services model themselves yet. And, uh, and so there's that, you've got to get them to 110% believe in it first, that to know that it is without a shadow of a doubt, far better for them and far better for the client than the current model before they can go out to their sales things because they're out there going, Oh, well, I think you should move across to these plans, but they can't really articulate why. And they're wondering why they're not closing any. And so a lot of it is making sure that 
you are 150% sold on, on it being the far better model than anything else out there uh, versus your kind of break fix offerings at, at least before you can go out and show it confidently to your clients. Cause they will see if you, if you're out there showing all these awesome plans that you've created and, and whatnot, but you can still, you still don't 100% believe it in your own mind. Every client will pick up on that. They'll see it and they'll go, Oh, well, this guy doesn't really believe in what he's showing me here <laughs> and they won't sign. You have to, you have to believe it yourself and you've got to figure out, Often that means that you've got to sit there and put yourself in your client eyes and and craft something that, that they're going to look at and go, holy crap, this is exactly what I need. I know this stuff and I need this stuff. And if you sit there and craft it from your client's perspective rather than your own perspective, it makes it a whole lot easier for you than to believe that you're, you're offering them something that's awesome. Right. You definitely have to drink the Kool-Aid. You do. Um, yeah. And, and there's people who I've sat across the table from people who say, look, I'm not going to sell I'm not going to install an RMM because then all my uh, labor will go away and I'll lose money. I'm like, oh my God, talk about not getting it. <laughs> and not, not caring for your clients. That is, they're, the, they're the sharks that we used to love taking business from because quite frankly, they just don't care about their clients. If you're not out there proactively doing stuff for your clients because you want that labor work to come in, you, you've not set up the right value prop. You've set it up in your favor, not in your client's favor. Right. Well, unfortunately, we're out of time, but uh, thank you very much. This was spectacular, as always. Thank you for having me. Always appreciate it. Always good to talk. All right. So, uh, Package Price Profit by Nigel Moore. We'll put a link to that in the show notes and a link to the Tech Tribe. And uh, with luck, I will see you in a few weeks. I am not going to be there, unfortunately. (laughs) I know Carla's visiting out here in Australia, and... uh, Australia is a big place. So where <laughs> Carl is going to is, is a long way from me. It's about a, a, a day and a half drive. Oh, wow. Uh, but I guarantee I'll see you in January, right? We will. I will All see right. you in January. I All am right. very looking forward to that in your <laughs> neck of the woods. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everybody, for listening to the SMB Community Podcast. Thank you for tuning in to the SMB Community Podcast. If you found this useful, interesting, or fun, please subscribe, share with your friends, and give us a thumbs up on your favorite social media. Please check out the show notes at smbcommunitypodcast.com and give us your feedback.